Welcome to Passionate World Talk Radio. Educate, enlighten, entertain. Hello. Any information discussed in this interview may not be the views of the station or the host. Please discuss any information or advice with your primary care physician. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio, where we educate, enlighten, and entertain. Folks, you're going to want to listen to my guest. I do have phenomenal guests on my show. My guest today is Linda Gratton, Professor Linda Gratton, who is author of Redesigning Work, How to Transform Your Organization and Make Hybrid Work in Work for Everyone. Can you read my own handwriting? <laughs> for everyone. Linda is professor of management practice at London Business School and one of the world's foremost experts on the future of work. Named by Business Thinkers 50 is one of the most top 15 business thinkers and described as a rock star teacher. Linda received Teacher of the Year Award and designed and directs the Future of Work elective one of the school's most popular electives. Linda's research on hybrid work was featured on the cover as the cover article for Harvard Business Reviews in May 2021. And I know there's many other things to discuss about Linda, but I suggest for the audience, Google, Google Linda, L-Y-N-D-A, G-R-A-T-T-O-A. Welcome, Professor Linda. Gratin, too. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Or alternatively, just go to my website, www.lindagratton.com, L-Y-N-D-A-G-R-A-T-T-O-N, and you'll see all the things that I've written and some videos and things. Oh, thank you. A website. Can you get that again, Linda? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm copying w- it now. <laughs> yes. www.lindagratton.com. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I I have to tell you, I listened to your TED Talk last night. I know it's from 2012, but I really enjoyed it. So I want to tell the audience, yes. go on YouTube, welcome, and look up Linda uh, Granton. And there's other um, interviews about Linda on there. Linda, I'm going to ask you what I ask all my um, guests that come on that have written books is, what motivated you to write this very interesting book? Well, well, first of all, thank you, Betsy, for having me on your show. Um, oh, you're welcome. I, I've been writing books for many years, uh, and mostly really about, you know, how we work, how the world is changing. I've written a book about how, as we get older, how do we come to terms with that, called A Hundred Year Life. And actually, I wasn't really planning to write a book uh, right about now, Betsy. But what happened is that when the pandemic came, Uh, I began to do some very detailed research on what was happening around the world uh, in terms of how people were responding, how they were, you know, changing the way that they work, how, you know, they were finding that they were building new skills. You know, many people built digital skills. Uh, They changed their habits. They weren't going into the office so much. They changed their networks. And uh, it it became obvious to me that I needed to write about this. So I rushed to get the book written because I wanted it to be out by about April or May of 2022 because I thought that by that stage, companies will be in the position of trying to make some really tough decisions about, well, you know, what do we do next? And so that was the genesis of the book, and I'm, I'm actually I'm thrilled with it. It's being translated into many languages, and it seems to have the sort of positive effect that I'd hoped it would have, Betsy. You know what, Linda, I have noticed in my area, I live in New Jersey, I don't live far from the train station that people take to go to New York City, and I noticed the parking lot still isn't as full, the traffic is much less. So do you think that hybrid is now in effect, that people are working from home and going to their jobs? Well, you know, that's a really interesting observation, Betsy. And I think all all around the world, people are saying the same, you know, that there's not so many people in the office. Here's my prediction. I think that 
what, what, a number of surprises from the pandemic. One is that companies realized that people could work from home using technology and the internet, and it seemed to be working okay. Secondly, they realized that they were, in some cases, more productive, not always, but in some cases, more productive. And thirdly, they realized they really liked it, that people liked some sort of flexibility and choice in their world. So I think um, unless the CEO absolutely says everybody's got to be back in, in the office full time, and some CEOs are saying that, um, I think the majority of people who can work from home, but of course, Betsy, that isn't everyone. Lots of people can't right. do any work from home, but those who can, I think are going to start choosing to do so. And I would have predicted that actually before the pandemic. I think, you know, before the pandemic, I'd shown a whole set of trends that had moved towards people wanting more flexibility. You know, the fact that we're living longer, we're going to be working into our 70s. You know, the fact that technology means we've got to upskill and reskill all the, fa- all the time. The fact is that many families now have two people who are, who are working, which makes you know, caring for kids and doing all the family admin incredibly difficult unless you've got some sort of flexibility. So it's not surprising to me that people are now saying, this is actually really valuable to me and I don't want to have to commute and go into New York every single morning. Uh, I, I, I value being able to work from home a couple of days a week and that's really where we are now. And I think that it's here to stay. I don't think it's straightforward. Uh, somebody said to me only last week, um, they said, you know, we used to manage by exactly your point, the number of cars in the car park. He said, I used to come in in the morning and if I saw that the car park was full, I knew everyone was being productive. So people <laughs> were using, you know, presenteeism as a proxy for productivity. Uh, and we can't do that now. So now we've got to be a bit smarter about how we work and how we measure performance and how we reward people. So I think it's not straightforward, which is why I, I read, wrote the book, um, Redesigning Work, because you have to sort of go back to first principles and redesign work. But I do think it's here to stay. And I do think those, those CEOs, and you know, you'll, you'll have heard some of them recently who have said, I want everybody back in the office or else you know, you're not going to have a career here. I think they're going to find that some of their really high potential people are going to go and leave. And so, um, yeah, there's, we're, we're, for me, I, the way I like to think about this, Betsy, is this is sort of series two, episode three. And there's still a lot more episodes to come, and there may even be another series. I feel, Linda, because I listen to the business news, the business guy on a news station, New York news station, and it seems that a lot of employers do want the hybrid. Uh, maybe some don't, but I think if they want to find quality people, they're going to have to accept that now people want to work from home, especially if you have ch- young children, you have that flexibility um, of being home if they're sick or a snow day. And I think employees may want to look for companies who are offering uh, a mixture, you know, doing the virtual um, yeah. Zoom or whatever, and, and being yeah. in the office. Do you yeah. see that as employees, potential employees, wanting that from, from companies? Oh, yes. I mean, who in the world doesn't want some more choice, Betsy? I mean, which of us wouldn't? You know, I'm a mom. Myself, my kids are all grown up. In fact, one of them is living in New York right now. But, um, you know, who wouldn't want to have been able to have gone to see their children, um, you know, play when they were 10 years old or, you know, gone to, to, to you know, spend a bit of time with their, their, their mother when she was really, uh, you know, tired and, uh, and ill. I mean, who wouldn't have wanted that? So, I mean, in, in, in the past, you, you couldn't have it. And that's why so many women dropped out of high-powered careers because, you know, they couldn't make it all work. But now I think we have a chance of making it all work, whether you're a man or a woman. And I think that's a good thing. You know, I'm very pleased by the way things are going. And I think there's going to be a lot of variety between companies. You know, some CEOs will say, I want everybody back in the office. Well, I don't have a problem with that. I think, you know, the the job of a CEO is to decide what the best way is to run their company. That's what they're paid to do. But they have to also think about the consequences, and the consequences are that they will lose some high potential people. So that's a decision that they've got to make. But I think in general, Betsy, 
uh, the genie's out of the out of the um, bottle now, and it's not going to be able to be pushed back in again. Uh, yes, and I think the pandemic. Uh, the one good thing about the pandemic is that companies realized, well, maybe this can work. Maybe it can work if people you work from home and maybe they can come into the office a couple of days. Also, Linda, I, I was thinking, too, especially, you know, in New York City where rent and overhead is very high, I'm sure it is in London, um, will a company want to pay the overhead of the gas and the electric? Also, I don't know about in England, but here in the U.S., I mean, our fuel went up so high that it's costing people more money to go to work. So they may yeah. want to have worked from home. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And I think that um, we are realizing that, you know, the way that we worked, which honestly, Betsy, was just really based on factories. Like, you know, when you think, why did we all go into the office every day? Well, it was because when, when offices were created, they were modeled on a factory, you know, a place where somebody goes every day to work on an assembly line. Uh, all, all day. And that's what we created and we built our lives around it. We built our, our lives around, fact, in effect, cognitive factories. But actually, it's a, it's a crazy thing to do. You know, one of the things I do with my students is to say, you know, if you think about the sort of jobs you want and the tasks you have to perform, forget about anything you know about offices or, or work. How would you design work? You know, what, what would you do to get this job done? And actually, very few will say, okay, I'd go into the office every single day, you know, from 8 o'clock in the morning till 6 at night or whatever. But, but, because it's just never been a very productive way of working. And it's an exhausting way of working. So I think it's absolutely great that people are redesigning work. What I find slightly sad is at the moment the conversation is all about should we be in the office or shouldn't we be in the office. And I think we can be much more creative about that, you know particularly about time. Um, for example, you know, maybe we should be thinking about, as we are in Europe right now, you know, the four-day working week, or maybe we should be thinking about having sabbaticals or, um, you know, really, you know, having work, work where you work in a very, very sort of, you know, in a very hard-working way for maybe five days and then take five days off. I mean, I think we, this is a great opportunity, Betsy, for us to be much more creative about how we work. Yes, I agree, uh, Professor Linda. I keep forgetting to call you Professor. Do you prefer I just call you Linda? Yeah, Linda. Everyone calls me Linda. Linda okay. Uh, I think companies and CEOs need to look at, and believe me, my, my forte is not business at all, and I was working at a job where I had to be there because I worked in a preschool. But if you're in a position where you can work from home, I think, in my opinion, CEOs need to wake up to, you know what? You're right, Linda. The nine to five in the office isn't working anymore. It's not yeah. going to be productive. And if they want a happy employee, then, you know, work with that person, whether they be a male or female or yeah. transgender, I, whatever they are, you know, I mean, because the, people have lives. Oh, go ahead. Yes, I think, I think that's right. And I think when you had no choice, I mean, you know, at a time when everybody had to go into the office and there was no choice between employers, then, you know, you had no choice. But now, as you rightly say, Betsy, some companies are saying, we can do this differently. So, for example, in my book, uh, Redesigning Work, one of the companies I talk about, which is a Canadian um, uh, investment company says you can work anywhere you want for three months a year. Well, you know that's a big deal, isn't it? If you if you happen to work to work in a Canadian company, but be Spanish, let's say, or Argentinian or Japanese, so you know, the possibility that you could go back to your home country and spend three months working near your family—that's a huge asset. So I think you know what's happening is in almost every area, there's one or two companies that are being incredibly, um, you know, bold about what they can do. For example, Airbnb said, uh, you can work anywhere you want. You don't need to come into the office to work for Airbnb. And the CEO was telling me, I think, I think that he said they had 800,000 applications uh, the next, in the next couple of weeks. I mean, lots of people want those options. So, 
you know, when you are a CEO or a leader of a business asking yourself, well, how should we work? Do be aware that there are other companies in your sector who might be being a lot more bold and courageous and exciting than you're being. Yes, and there's a saying, you know, happy wife is happy life. Well, I think a happy employee will be a productive employee. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, I agree. <laughs> and, and particularly, you know, it's interesting, one of the areas that I look at is the impact of robotics and artificial intelligence on work. And actually, you know, AI, artificial intelligence and robotics can do quite a lot of the you know, they're straightforward, easy work. So what's left for humans is stuff that, you know, we have to be creative and imaginative. We have to be collaborative. We have to listen carefully to each other. And you're much likely to do all of those things if you're happy. If you're unhappy, you don't, you are not creative. You don't listen to other people. Um, you know, you're not empathic. So I, I agree. In fact, I was working with a Korean company, FK, last week, and they have, is the second largest company in Korea, and they have happiness as the central aspect of their business strategy. Happy employees, it's at the very heart of what they're doing in that company. Yes, I, and, you know, I just thought of another point and talking to you, Linda, you know, with happy employees, as, and I'm a baby boomer, as baby you boomers are in, the work, <laughs> are in the workforce and aging, they're not, they're taking care of their parents now. So yes. they're also caregivers. And I, I was yeah. a caregiver. So I'm just going to, you know, put this out there. When you're a caregiver, it's very hard when you're working a nine to five in an office. I think employers should really consider the hybrid uh, formula, I want to call it, um, for their employee because people don't have to take as much time off as they could yeah. work from home. And as long yeah. as they get their work done um, and work their own hours, I think they'll be much more um, productive. You know, yeah. I mean, if someone has to say, Oh, Linda, I can't work today. I have to take my mom or dad to the doctor. Well, that may not go over well, but if you are in a hybrid situation, you can do that without getting, you know, aggravated or your voice yeah. or your boss being mad at you. Well, I, and, and that's, that's right. And I think, you know, the challenge we're facing at the moment <coughs> is because managers manage people in terms of presenteeism, are you in the office or are you not in the office? Then when people aren't in the office, managers begin to fret that you're, you know, you're a lazy bum, you're just lying at home or, you know, you're, just, <laughs> you're, not, you're not actually doing any work. And so part of the redesign of work is also asking about, well, how do you assess whether anyone's doing anything or not? And that means that's a much more sophisticated management job than just simply saying how many cars are in the car park this morning. Um, and so, you know, that's the challenge we face now is that how do you, how can you be sure that somebody's actually working for you when you can't see them? Uh, and that's partly about trust. Uh, it's partly about recruiting the right people so that you don't recruit slackers. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's partly about the way that you show them what the job is. And it's partly about just keeping an eye on what they do. And you'll, I, I saw when I did my research for, for my new book, Redesigning Work, I saw that um, you know, companies that all, had all, always had home workers have quite a lot of ways of just checking in with them, just checking in that, you know, you're okay, you're working okay, is it all happening? And that's not checking up always. It's actually checking in. It's just, for example, you know, having a daily meeting, how are things going, what, well, how's the project, and so on. So I think we need to, as we move to a more hybrid way of working, we also have to think about uh, more sophisticated ways of being sure that people are being productive. Yes, that's a good point. I would think, like I said, I'm not, you know, in the business world, but I would think if I was a CEO or if I was a manager, I'd want to have daily meetings or weekly meeting. And for the person to maybe, okay, there's not a time card, but, you know, you have deadlines. Are they being met? Yeah. Um, well, that's right. So, so that's the way you, so rather than managing 
by how many cars are in the car park. You manage by saying these are the things that you agreed to do. How, where, how are you getting on with them? And that that level of management is 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 a more sophisticated level than just say, saying I, you're sitting at your desk. So I'm assuming you're working because actually you can slack off sitting at the desk if you want to. Even in the office you can slack off. So. Um, you know, you have to be much more thoughtful about outcomes rather than presenteeism. Yes, yes, that's so true. I worked in a preschool, and most of the parents, uh, even back before the uh, COVID, had um, hybrid. They were able to work from home yeah. and because they were all in IT. And right. they were able to work from home and, you know, if their child was sick, they could, you know, be there or if there, if there wasn't any, you know, school that day, the daycare yeah. was closed. So yeah. there was hybrid before the pandemic. And I'm really glad, Linda, that the pandemic has changed the workplace and redesigning it. And yeah. your book is full of wonderful ideas and uh, in my opinion, I think every CEO of every company should read your book and oh, hire you for a consult. <laughs> um, well, <let's>, because, <laughs> oh, by the way, I, should, I, see, I also narrated it. I don't usually narrate my own books, but in this t case I did. So if you download the audio book, you'll hear me actually reading the book. If you like to listen to an, American, an English accent. Um, <laughs> then, then I do. You can hear me reading the book. So just go to audio books and you can download the book. Uh, I think you know, your ideas are, you know, fantastic. When we think of, um, you know, working at home, a lot of people think of someone in their pajamas, you know, not really doing work. But there does have to be accountability when yeah. someone, you know, is working from home. And I, I think the way of the future is to have a hybrid uh, work system. Um, yeah. Just, you know, the way it, uh, the economy is, is going with the price of fuel. And I also, Linda, have to I think about what we call here the mom and pop stores. You know, when people yeah. don't go to work, especially when COVID was happening in full speed they suffered you know people didn't go into the city so they didn't go yeah. to the coffee shops or bagel yeah. shops the restaurants and they yeah. suffered greatly you know and it's yeah. a domino effect how do you feel it's, about that well that definitely is the case you know and the, the other way to look at it is that neighborhoods thrived so you might not be going to new york every day but you're staying in your neighborhood wherever that is and using your local local shops so Certainly, you know, part of the group, the group I'm talking to at the most at the moment are architects who are designing buildings because they're saying, hang on, you know, we're just about to build this great big office block in the center of New York. Um, is anybody going to come to it? And the answer is, well, yes, they will, but there won't be as so many people. And they won't want to come to an office block, uh, office which is just open plan, where they just come in, put their noise cancelling um, headphones on, open their computers, and, and, and do their emails all day. They're now saying, well, hang on, I could do that at home. So there's now a, the big, one of the big conversations at the moment, Betsy, is what's an office for? You know, if you come to the office, and I think it's a good idea to get together, what are the shared experiences? You know, what are you going to do when you're there? What's going to make it a worthwhile thing to do? But definitely there's going to be a move away from these great big office blocks in the center of large cities. Because as you say, there's a big commute, you know, to get into London. I've just commuted this morning, actually, from the countryside into London. It took me one and a quarter hour. Same in Tokyo, same in New York, same in San Francisco. So these, these you know, living in these cities extracts a lot from an individual if they're commuting three hours a day. And that doesn't even include, as you say, the cost of, 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 of energy, which is only going to go up, and indeed the CO2 that's created. So, uh, yes, I mean, I think that city centers will change, uh, but it also is an opportunity for neighborhoods to really, you know, become more thriving. That's a good suggestion. I never, you know, thought that, it just made me think of that, um, that the neighborhoods will, you know, like uh, where I live, will benefit from people staying at home because they'll 
go to the local shops versus yeah, going to another neighborhood. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's a good point. And uh, I, I oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say that the, we 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 call that social capital. You know, that the relationships within a community we call it social capital. And in the U.S., actually, really compared to much of Europe. That's been eroding for many years as people just simply live in, live in neighborhoods. They, they drive or get the, you know, the train into New York or San Francisco or wherever. And those neighborhoods die, really, uh, in terms of the relationships and the friendships within them. You don't see that so much in Spain or Italy, where they're much more community orientated. So going back and building stronger communities and stronger neighborhoods is a very good thing. It's a good thing for our our peace of mind, it's a good thing for, you know, if you know your neighbors and you like your neighbors, you know, it's a much happier life than if you're completely isolated from them because you're jumping in a computer, on a commuter train at six in the morning and coming back at 10 at night. Uh, yes, yes, that's true. And I think, you know, they're going to have to think about the office. I mean, company spending, you know, all this money on office buildings and when they may not have to. Um, yeah, that, maybe you know. Yeah. The challenge is, could, yeah, the investment cycle for offices is ten years. So it's not that a company can just from one minute to the next say, "Oh, I'm not going to use this office anymore." Many of them have made ten-year, uh, you know, financial commitments. But what they're doing now is they're redesigning them to becoming much more places of cooperation and where people can do innovative stuff. They're taking out quite a lot of the desks. They're making them more social places. But I think in the long term, it will be a very brave CEO now who signs a contract to have a great big office built, you know, in 10 years' time. I think that's not going to happen. Yes, I, I agree with that. Linda, it was such a pleasure having you on today. Uh, so excited to talk to someone from London. I love to hear the English accent and to get, <laughs> to, uh, to get your, your viewpoint of um, the hybrid um, work uh, situation. And, you know, the companies, yes, they definitely do have to uh, redesign uh, the work of the future. And um, my opinion, I really think that hybrid is, the, is going to be the, the way to go. Um, well, thank you. Thanks, Betsy. Um, I would like to tell the audience, Oh, uh, where can they buy your book, Linda? I know it's on Amazon. Can they get it from your book? I mean, from your website? Uh, no, I don't. No, I'm afraid not. But you can certainly download a fantastic free uh, workbook about how to redesign your work. But yeah, you can get it from any bookshop in the in the U.S. It's published by MIT Press. Okay, so I know it's on Amazon. Uh, dot com. And folks, uh, the information about Linda Gratton will be in the blog, so please read the blog that Jeannie White, station manager, writes, and she produces the show. Thank you, Jeannie. And Linda's website is www.linda, that's L-Y-N-D-A, G-R-A-T-T-O-N.com. And the book is Redesigning Work, How to Transform Your Organization and Make Hybrid Work for Everyone. Thank you so much, Professor you, Linda Gratton. Such a Thank pleasure you. talking to you today. Uh, you're welcome. And I want to thank Lillian Caldwell, CEO of Patrick World Talk Radio, who makes this all possible. And thank you, listeners. Please share this podcast to help someone else. Um, this is a wonderful topic. Uh, I think a very interesting. This is the way of the future. And as you know, folks, if you listen to me, chatting with Betsy is about helping other people. And if any CEOs are listening, I highly recommend this book. Uh, if you're an employer, I employee, I recommend getting this book. And I just um, can't thank the audience enough. I also have to do public service announcement. So everyone knows this is month of June. June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. If you're looking for a support group, I have one. Hashtag kick Alzheimer's ass movement on Facebook. And uh, we don't need a month. Those who have 
suffered through the journey or going through the journey. So learn about Alzheimer's, educate yourself. Nobody is immune to this horrible disease. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy at Passionate World Talk Radio. As I always say, in a world where you could be anything, please be kind. Shall we chat again? Be blessed. Bye-bye, everybody. Are you looking for an internet talk radio station for your podcast? Look no further. At the helm of Passionate World Talk Radio are two women that want to provide a spot for you and your podcast to be heard. There are many other places for your podcast, but PWTR has the audience. You will not be disappointed. Our station has been on the Internet for the past 16 years. Call us for more information, 484-364-1032, or text Jeannie White, Station Manager at T-H-E-C-O-N-N-E-C-T-S-H-O-W at gmail.com for a podcast show details. Thank you for listening to Passionate World Talk Radio. You can listen to this program all over again by going over to https colon forward slash forward slash passionate world talk radio dot com. You can also hear it on Spotify, Spreaker, Amazon A L E X A. AMFM247.com every Tuesday evening between 8 and 9 p.m. YouTube, Facebook, Facebook Live, LinkedIn, and all the other podcast directories one can find on the Internet.